If I was to walk into a Zimbabwean bank today and ask for a mortgage, they would probably think I'm trying to film a skit. And they would definitely call security once they realize that I'm serious. I'm not alone in this predicament. If you're a young person in Zimbabwe right now, you have a better chance of having a docket with your name on it than a payslip with your name on it. Most of us, despite being married and having children of our own, are still very much children. Children in the sense that when it really comes down to it, we are not able to independently take care of ourselves. Most of us are surviving at the mercy of our parents and extended families. Have you noticed how insurance and medical aid societies don't even bother advertising to us anymore? Instead, their target market, scratch that. Their only market is our parents. It's a no-brainer. They're the only ones with jobs. Or at the very least, they have a pension. But <laughs> that's where it gets tricky. Our parents are dying. What's going to happen when that time comes to pass? Who is going to take care of us then? So our question today is, what does the future look like for young people? Actually, <laughs> there, is, there is only one answer to that question. The future looks black. The future looks very black. So let me rephrase that. What do young Zimbabweans want their future to look like? Ladies and gentlemen, war vets and unfocused youth, welcome to another episode of Propaganda. We can do it. Being a young Zimbabwean is like being on a never-ending game show, where the rules keep changing and Passion Java is the host. It's both heartbreaking and confusing. You grow up being encouraged to amass as much education as you possibly can, only to grow up and realize that the only jobs available are Pazimex Mall. And even there, Pazimex Mall, they want no less than five years' experience for an entry-level job. Instead of talking on behalf of young people, I thought, why not let young people speak for themselves? My hope for the future is a Zimbabwe in which immigrating to a different country is a choice and not a necessity or a survival requirement. And that choice coming also with the opportunity of deciding after exploring the different options around you, um, being able to decide that home is best, knowing that you can go back and have access to opportunities access to growth, whether that's um, financially, emotionally, um, whatever it is that looks like so that you can live a full life. Do you have a car? A brand new car. Afford to buy a brand new car. You have to buy a brand new car. You have to buy a brand new car. I want there to be more legislature and more accurate and more informed and compassionate methods available and like infrastructure in place for recognizing the different forms of rape and doing something about it so that each time I go outside, I don't have to worry about, should I get raped tonight? I need to make sure I have enough presence of mind to document everything, even though I've probably been robbed at the same time, just so that the police will actually believe me and, oh wait, there's no point because turns out the law doesn't recognize X type of sexual assault as rape. You know, just for medical aid to be accessible. Because right now, you know, you be don't know my so you kind of have to create your own path. But when you do that, a medical aid actual so I would love where having like a medical aid is not like a luxury you know uh so two things come to my mind the first thing is i want to be comfortable drinking water if i'm not at home um i never want to ask if this is warm water or worry if i'm going to get diarrhea from drinking um you know tap water or non bottled water uh, the other thing is i just want to transact without being a mathematician you know it's so hard here Every day asking to the Jiribachinas, 
Um, I just want a future without debt. I just want a future where I earn money that works anywhere in the world and it's in my bank and I can just do an, an online transaction to anywhere in the world. Bob, way that I want is that I dream of is one that I can come back home. And as a young woman, um, one that doesn't persecute young women that have dreams to aspire to, to anything in maybe in politics, maybe serving in government, that that for women, I, I guess I dream of a Zimbabwe where that for women is not a far-fetched dream, where the fear of being tortured, of persecution, of sexual assault, of being called obscenities and the government never doing anything to protect women. I dream of a Zimbabwe where women are valued where women can participate equally without the fear of discrimination or violence against us. I would like a future where there are established institutions to support young people in the country, as well as basic commodities as well, and as well as other institutions that can support uh, the middle-aged people uh, in the country and uh, those close to retirement for good pensions and things like that. I would like a future where we can work hard, where we are afforded platforms to work hard and uplift the country and put it on the map and even export our gifts. I want a Zimbabwe that has a thriving economy, an economy that allows me to have freedom of choice, an economy that allows me to choose how I want to participate and where I want to participate. I just don't want to be pigeonholed into a certain sector of the economy. I don't want to be forced into uh, manufacturing, I don't want to be forced into mining, I don't want to be forced into agriculture, I don't want to be forced into care caring, I just don't want to be forced to be a hustler. I want a Zimbabwe that permits me to choose how I want to contribute towards the growth of this country. I just want a future where I can actually make a living just off my, my, my passion, my talent, without having to have a 9 to 5 to make the money make sense. Not having to stress too much, you know, because now you're trying to balance between your, what you love doing and what you have to do just to make a living. We need access, we need opportunities, opportunities to jobs. I mean, you can go to school for four years, five years, six years, and you'll sit at home for another three years. But for what? You're not able to take care of yourself, you're not able to take care of your parents, you're not able to, to start your own life. What I'd really like is to be able to go online or read the paper and see a job vacancy ad and think, do I meet the qualifications? You know, instead of thinking, do I know someone who works there or do I know someone who knows someone who works there? We can't have 90 to 95% of graduates every year either planning to leave the country or deciding to hustle. You know, we've, we've made hustling seem really cool, but people should have the option in their own country, to either be in the formal sector or in the informal sector. We actually want to be citizens that pay taxes, citizens that make decisions, knowing that we can back it up as well, you know? I want to live in a Zimbabwe where I don't have to worry about my future and where what I do is actually enough to earn me a decent living. I love to dance and I want dance to make that way for me. I shouldn't have to you know, look for other ways to supplement doing what I love so that I can live a decent lifestyle. I don't want success to be based off of leaving the country. I just want to be able to make it in my country, be who I am, and make sure that my daughter has a decent future as well. I want to be able to buy a car, buy a house, based off of what I love, and just to show my daughter that it is possible in this very country of ours. My ATM, guys. Now shun summer ATM at least once or twice a week. We have 20 year olds who are sat on both on summer ATM. Ah, Tungo knows and Zungo no more. You need to open it. We are really not asking for a lot, just the bare minimum. The ability to plan beyond tomorrow, the ability to save, the ability to put our very expensive education to good use. The ability to provide a decent life for our kids. When my parents pass on, I want to be able to bury them with pride in a way that honors them. All we're asking for is our dignity back. Eating KFC should just be that. Eating KFC. Not something you should
I want to live in a Zimbabwe that rewards people based on merit, not what totem they have or who they are sleeping with. I want the Zimbabwe that Mbuyane and Leopold Takawira died fighting for. And when the time comes for me to cast my vote, that's the Zimbabwe that I'll be voting for. This has been another episode of Propaganda with Kandoro. And if everything goes well, I'll catch you guys next week.